In September 2009, the same week a radiologist found malignant cells in my breast, a beagle named Pop found bedbugs in my one-bedroom apartment. If you think bedbugs are not apartment cancer, you've never had bedbugs. While my tumor sneaked up on me, there were warning signs for the bedbugs. I'd spent the summer scratching like a first grader with chicken pox. I blamed it on the mosquitoes from working as a field reporter on Long Island. They couldn't be bed bugs. They were not in a straight line. But the mosquito bites were so severe that I woke up every night at 3 a.m. At the end of August, I got a letter and a call informing me that additional views were needed on my mammogram. Then one morning, there was a line of welts marching down my husband Ethan's leg. Appointments were necessary. My breast would need an ultrasound and more mammograms. And we would need a bed bug dog, Stat. Like the best doctors, the best bed bug dogs are hard to book. <laughs> the exterminator seemed determined to schedule the dog for the morning of my tests. But this was something I needed to see. While I'd never had a bed bug dog sniff my home, I'd only had one previous mammogram. I didn't know that when they keep taking more views, it's a bad sign. When I was finally called in, I figured it was for a chat. The radiologist, a compassionate woman, looked at me quizzically. You never felt a lump? No. There's an area of concern. You mean cancer? We won't know for sure until the biopsy. Pop, the beagle, knew how to make an instant diagnosis. He showed up at 7 a.m. the next day and lurched on his hind legs when he found what he was looking for. There were signs of metastases to my beloved green sofa from Minneapolis and my handmade rocking chair. With plans to spend Labor Day weekend waiting for biopsy results in a bed bug infested apartment, I did what any normal New York gal would do. I headed for the Zydeco Festival in Opelousas, Louisiana. <laughs> the festival had always been on my wish list. However, heat, the Hamptons, or a hurricane always seemed to get in the way. But now, I was on a plane faster than you can say jambalaya. I spent the weekend in a land of friendly people, cold beer, and music that has the beat of a pumping heart. A place so hard to get to that cancer could not find me. But 9.05 Tuesday morning, the good time stopped rolling. The call came in. The biopsy contained cancer. Dr. Susan Love, has called the treatment for breast cancer, slash, poison, and burn. And the same is true for bed bugs. First, you have to get the worst, out, worst of it out. I've lived off and on in my Upper East Side apartment since 1997, and I traveled around the USA as a TV news reporter. At one point, I filled up a three-bedroom house in Wisconsin. A lot of stuff is squeezed into our abode. While I could not tear the cancer cells out of my body, I would rip anything touched by bed bugs out of my life. If it wasn't in the bed bug zone and it wasn't from Bergdorf's, it went in the trash. <laughs> While I wanted to conserve my breast, my possessions were a different story. Next came the poison. I would need to wrap all of my personal items tightly in plastic bags. Anything not sealed up would need to be treated. The exterminator could only squeeze me in on the morning of my MRI and PET scans. To prepare for the tests, I had to stop eating after midnight. As the clock ticked down, I sipped a chocolate milkshake, laced with Baileys, and spent the night sealing things up. Where does the burning come in? Bed bug therapy includes a device called the Pactite, in which you bake your possessions until any bed bug eggs are killed. That morning, I headed to my MRI. My lucky streak continued when the machine broke down. As I lay stuck in the tube, the technician spent 45 minutes on the phone with GE, the same company that had laid off my husband a year earlier. <laughs> Ethan was home with the exterminator and would join me as soon as he could. After I escaped the MRI machine, a nurse led me down First Avenue to my PET scan. I'd passed through this neighborhood thousands of times, but everything looked different. 
Becoming a cancer patient was lo like looking at the world through someone else's Coke bottle glasses. The nurse looked at me and said, I have one piece of advice for you, Xanax. As I sat sipping the chalky goop, my phone rang. My husband had good news and bad news. The bad. President Obama was making his first visit to the UN, meaning the east side was gridlocked. My husband was stuck in traffic. The good? The exterminator called our infestation early stage. We had a decent prognosis, but we would have to watch carefully and make sure the bugs did not come back. In the end, we had to abandon my green sofa, but exterminators were able to reclaim control of the rocking chair. And even more important, surgeons were able to save my breast.